Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm A.J. Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. Go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Effortless English Show, live again on Facebook. Today's topic, American football, a culture topic, cultural topic. I asked for suggested topics on social media, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, and this was one of the topics that people suggested. Topics about American sports, topics about American culture. So here you go. Today we're going to talk about American football. A couple reasons to learn about American football. Number one, a lot of idioms. There are a good number of idioms and vocabulary connected to American football that we use very commonly, that Americans, and really North Americans, because Canada, Canadians, they have a, an American football league also, so they understand the rules of football too. So we have certain idioms, you know, that are connected to, you know, the game. Kickoff is the one we're going to learn today. Kickoff. Kickoff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you some of the basic rules of American football. Because American football season is starting, oh, let me think, probably about five or six weeks. So end of August, American football season will begin. And I'll do more lessons then, but I'm going to teach you some of the basic rules of American football before the season starts, and then we'll review some of the games. And during the season, we'll follow my favorite team. I'm wearing the hat right now if you're watching the video. This is my team, Georgia Bulldogs. So we're going to follow college football. There are two kinds of, two big football leagues, two you know, levels in the United States, professional and college. And uh, really, they're, I'd say they're almost equally big. The professional league's big, but I think the, the professional league is dropping in popularity a little bit. College football is very, very, very popular, and I like it. I like it better. So this is my team. This is where I went to school, University of Georgia, in the state of Georgia. So everyone's saying hi on Facebook, as usual. Fernanda, hey again, from Brazil. So we have the usual places. Someone from Malaysia, but lives in Taiwan. Kurdistan. Hello, Thailand. Hello, Vietnam. Hello, Poland. Hello, Egypt. Hello, hello, hello. Glad you like foot. Glad you like football, coach. Yes. So, American football. Let's talk about it. This is a. It's a big part of American culture. It's the number one sport for sure. Especially if you combine, if you combine professional football and college football, you put it together. The number of fans and the, the amount of money, all of that, it's huge, gigantic, definitely number one in the United States, by far number one. So if you want to understand something about American culture, American football is a good place to start. As I said, there are two very popular levels. One is the professional and the other is college. They're both big. They're both gigantic, huge, 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 huge numbers of fans, very, very popular, lots of excitement. I prefer the college game because there's more of a connection, a local connection. You know, for the professional team, I, I have a professional team I like because I, when I was a small child, I was living in Florida, grew up and I was born in Florida. And so at that time, the, the Florida team, it was the Miami Dolphins. They were the only team in Florida. Now Florida has a few teams, but at that time it was only them, and they were the champions for a few years when I was little. So I was a Miami Dolphins fan from a very small age, like five years old, and so I've always been kind of a Miami Dolphins fan. But, you know, I, I, I don't 
that's kind of a small connection. I never lived in Miami, the actual city. And actually, with college, though, there's a much closer connection because I actually went to the University of Georgia I, two times, actually. I got a graduate degree in undergrad, so I was there. I attended the university for about six and a half years. I lived in the town where the university is for almost 14 years, so I have a very strong connection. And in general, even people who don't go to the University of Georgia, but people who live in Georgia, Georgians, they have a strong local connection to this team. So there's a much, I'd say, a much stronger local connection in college football. And it's actually the kind of local connection that I see uh, in soccer internationally, right? Like when I read about the Premier League, the British League, you know, a lot of those teams have very strong connections to their local town, their local neighborhoods, long histories going back a long time. So it, that's very similar to college football in the United States. Pro football, professional football, not as much. So there is this very much a local connection, a very strong local connection with college football. So the next thing is you, you got to learn the rules, <laughs> okay? Because if you American football is kind of unique, it's only played, it's only popular, I believe, in Canada and the United States. I don't know any other countries that really play American football. Those two. So if you're outside of those countries, you might not understand it. So let's learn a little bit, shall we? All right, let's look at it. So football. How does a football game begin? That's what we're going to learn today. Now, you know, in soccer, how it begins, you know, you've, the two teams line up. One team has it. The guy kicks it. Well, it's actually a little bit similar to that in American football. And I'm just going to say football for now on because in, in American English, we just say football. We don't say American football. The other game is called soccer. So it's soccer in Australia, they also say soccer. So Australians and Americans, we say soccer. I believe Canadians also say soccer. So when we say football, we are talking about American football. So how does the game begin? It begins with the kickoff. So that's our lesson for today, the beginning of an American football game. How do we do it? Let's go look. I got actually a little video from my favorite team, a really good game last year, the semifinals from last year. That It was my team, Georgia, against Oklahoma. And we're going to watch a video now of a kickoff, and this is how a game begins. So the two teams line up. Let me see if I can... If you're watching on video, it's helpful. I'll try to describe it for those who are only listening to audio. So here we go. Let's play a little bit. Seeing that old footage. Of these okay, so watching on video, you will see. If you have to look carefully. But you have on one side, one team. They're in red. That's Oklahoma during this game. And they line up in a line. These numbers are yards. Okay, they're yards. A yard is pretty close to a meter. Not exactly a meter, but close. Close enough. So if you want to imagine how, how long is a yard, uh, about a meter. Okay, so they're lined up. The kicking team here in college football, the rules, they're, they're lined up. The, the, the ball is right here, which is on the 35-yard line. And the team is back a little bit. So what they're going to do is they line up, and then this, there's one guy who's the kicker. Okay, so this is the kicking team. Easy. So it's a kickoff. This beginning, the way they begin a game, is called the kickoff. And it's, you'll see, obviously, why. There's the ball here is just sitting on the uh, grass. And then the kicking team is lined up in a line. And in the middle of the kicking team is the kicker. He's going to run. They're all going to run together. And the kicker will kick the ball. And he's going to kick it to the other team. So since the red team is Oklahoma in this game, they're kicking it to my team. They're kicking it to Georgia. What's the other team called? What was Georgia? Well, Georgia in this situation, we call Georgia the receiving team. Seems obvious, right? So there's the kicking team and the receiving team. Georgia in the white. They're also lined up, but they're lined up differently. You can see the kicking team is just one long line, right? Just a straight line 
with the kicker in the middle. And they're all going to run together. And after the kick, they'll run towards the receiving team. They'll run towards Georgia. And they're going to try to grab the guy who catches the ball and tackle him, right? Take him to the ground. Now, the Georgia team, the receiving team, they line up a little differently. Some, they have a front line. How many guys? One, two, three, four, five. One guy's hidden on this video. So the very front line, they're on the 50-yard line. That's the middle of the, the field. So they've got a, a front line. And then they've got a middle line, which we can't see right now on the video. And then in the very back, they have the guys who will catch it, the, the receivers. The, the, they're called the return the returners, because they're going to catch the ball and return it. They're going to run back the other way. What's the job of the receiving team? Well, the job of the receiving team is to receive the ball, to catch it. The guy in the back is going to catch it. And then to run to the other end of the field, right? That's why it's called return. They're returning it to the other end of the field. So all of the other guys on the team, there are 11 people per side. So one guy will catch it, and then there's 10 more guys for Georgia. We'll talk about Georgia, the receiving team. So one Georgia guy is going to catch it. The other 10 are going to block. They have to block the Oklahoma guys, right? The kicking team, they're trying to run down and tackle him, grab him and throw him to the ground, and then, then, then everything stops. The receiver the, on the Georgia team, he's trying to catch the ball and run all the way to the other end of the field. And if he gets to the other end, he gets six points, which is called a touchdown. Okay, so the receiving team, they're going to try to block for him. And then the guy that catches the ball, he's going to try to run all the way to the end and get six points, get a touchdown. Usually that's very tough to do. It has happened sometimes on the kickoff. Sometimes on the kickoff, someone will run all the way, but not usually. It's very difficult to do. So let's watch the video now. See what happens. So Oklahoma is going to kick the ball to Georgia. Here we go. And I'll talk, come back and we'll watch it again in a minute. Here we go. Games that have been played here. Okay, it's running. And boom, yeah. kicks it. It's in the air. Just the, the Georgia player catches it in the back. And see, now he's running. Everyone's blocking for him. Oh, he's still, running. still running. Still running. 30-yard line. 35-yard line. And they finally tackle him down. down. And there was a, you saw a yellow flag came out during that. It's called a play, okay? When, whenever there's action in a, a football game, it's called a play, a play. So during that play, the referee, there were the guys that look like zebras in the black and white. They threw a yellow flag. It's, you know, it's kind of like, you know, you get a yellow card in, uh, in soccer. Eh, kind of like that. It's a little different, but uh, it's basically the same idea. It's a penalty, right? And now he's, he comes on and the referee announces the penalty that one of the teams broke a rule. Now in football, so in soccer, you get a yellow card. If you get two yellow cards, you're out, right? But, um, or you get a red card and you're out immediately. But in football, the penalty is yards. They, do, they move your team backwards, That's, which is not good, right? So if your team makes a penalty, they throw the yellow flags, then they move them back. And if it's a really bad penalty, they move back far, like you know, 15 yards. If it's a small penalty, maybe they move back five yards. So it depends on which penalty. That's how far they get pushed back, pushed back, right? So you have to think that uh, it's, it's different than soccer. So soccer, you know, it's, you're trying to score a goal, but the teams are going to go back and forth, back and forth, right? If you have the ball, your team has the ball in soccer. You might kick it to the forward, but then if there's nowhere to go, you might kick it back again, and you might kick it forward again and back, right? Back and forth, back and forth. But in football, really, it's more like you're marching. You're marching forward, marching forward. You don't want to go backwards in football. They might throw it back a little bit to a player, but then he's going to run it forward, right? So when the play begins... You want to go forward. You don't want to go backwards each play. That's really bad. So you're trying to go forward, forward, forward. Always trying to go forward in football. That's why a backwards penalty is bad. It's terrible. All right, let's look at the kickoff again. 
just love seeing that old footage. Okay, so once again, the kickoff. So again, we have the kicking team and the receiving team. 11 on each side, always 11 on each side. This is, they do a kickoff at the beginning of every game. They also do a kickoff after one team scores. So if one team scores, they go all the way to the end, they get a touchdown. That's called a touchdown. They make it to the end. Then what happens next? Well, the team that scored, the team that got the points, then they kick off to the other team. The other team gets to try to score, right? They kind of switch sides. So in this one, Oklahoma is kicking to Georgia. Georgia runs back. The guy gets to like the 35-yard line. And then after that, then they'll start normal play after that. They'll start normal play. We'll talk about that later. It's a little complicated. I'll do another lesson about that. But they start normal play, and Georgia tries to go forward, 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 and Oklahoma tries to stop them. But if Georgia goes forward, 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 and they score, then we go back again to the same position, except Georgia kicks. The scoring team, the team that scores points, always kicks during the next play. So anytime your team scores, there's one exception, but we won't talk about that right now. <laughs> uh, any team that scores kicks off to the next team. So that's the basic idea of a kickoff and the beginning of an American football game. Again, there are always 11 people per side, 11 on the field. There are more people, like they tend to have special, each player kind of specializes. So, for example, these are called special teams. That's another good vocabulary. Special teams. There are three kinds of positions or plays. There's offense. It's kind of obvious. Offense is trying to score the ball during normal play. There's defense. Defense is trying to prevent the score, stop the other team scoring. And then there's what's called special teams. Special teams are kind of special situations. The kickoff is a special situation. They don't do the kickoff all the time. It's only at the beginning of the game, the beginning of halftime, or when someone scores. The rest of the time, there's no kickoff. So it's a special situation. So they call the players on the field now. They're part of the special teams. So special teams. All right, I think that's enough for now. It can get very confusing if you don't understand the game. So we're going to do piece by piece, okay? All right, so we actually have an idiom connected to this, kickoff. We use this word very generally to mean the beginning of something. Let's, we can use it as a verb. We say, you know, let's kick off the campaign. Let's kick off the trip. It means let's begin the trip. Let's start it. Let's start it maybe with a ritual. Let's start it with a celebration. Let's start it with a meeting, right? Let's kick it off. So to kick something off means to begin it, to officially begin something, a project, a trip, anything really, to kick off. So it comes from football, but it has a more general meaning to start anything. Okay. Let's see if you understand this explanation you may have questions so i'm gonna to go to questions and comments now live it's quite value valuable and useful because i know this game i grew up playing this game as a small child so for me it's quite easy but i know that if you don't know the game it can seem very confusing so let's go back and take a look at your comments yeah here's a good a good com a funny Comment. Forrest Gump is the fastest man in football. Yes, Forrest Gump played football. He played for Alabama, who are actually, they're the national champions this year, and they beat my team. So I don't like them. I don't like Forrest Gump's team. <laughs> they're the neighbors of Georgia, and they beat my team in the national championship game last year, this year. Hi, from Italy. Why do you call it soccer? Um, well, soccer actually comes from association football and actually was a very popular word in England. The English used to call it soccer, too. And, I, you know, that, that name came to the United States and Canada. Now they call it football over there, but the name, the, the name soccer is used in Canada, in the United States, in Australia. 
possibly some other countries, maybe Ireland. They're, they're probably like, they're four or five English speaking countries that actually call it soccer, not football. Oh man, my glasses already broke. These cheap things. All right, let's see. What are the questions or comments do we have? Stop saying soccer. No, you shut up. <laughs> it's so annoying when people get mad at the word soccer. Look, it's an English word. If you don't like it, tough. We don't care. The correct word is soccer in the United States, Canada, Australia, probably New Zealand. I'm not sure about New Zealand, but that is the correct word in English. Football is the game I just showed you on video. And of course, if I was to go to uh, Spain, I would say football, because that's what the correct name of the game is in Spain. I would not say soccer if I was speaking Spanish, but I'm speaking English, American English, and the correct word is soccer. And it has a fairly long history, actually, going back to England. So... Okay, let's see. Hi from Ukraine. Hello, India. Lots of countries saying hello, Czech Republic. Okay, let's go back to the end and see what we got here. All right, Kurdistan. Hello. I love football, says Emmanuel. Cool. Hello from Dominican Republic. It's complicated. Okay, Fernanda says it's complicated. It is a little complicated. <laughs> I have to admit. I think that uh, football is a bit more complicated than soccer in terms of the rules. Uh, there's just so many rules and uh, for different situations: or offense, defense, foot uh, kickoff, other special teams. <laughs> it uh, if you don't grow up with it, playing it, it can f seem a little confusing. So, you know, here's the thing. You don't need to know every little work, every little rule, okay? There are lots of little rules. It's kind of like if, to watch soccer. If I want to watch soccer, I, I did not grow up playing lots of soccer. I don't really need to understand the offsides rule, right? I mean, it is a rule in soccer, of course. It's kind of important. But I can appreciate the game of soccer even if I don't understand that rule, right? I get the general idea, okay? I kick the ball and into the net. <laughs> and the other team, get the ball, kick it into this net. The goalie blocks it, and everybody else cannot use their hands. That's the basic core rules of soccer. And there are other, plenty of other rules, of course, like offsides. But if you just understand the, those core, basic, fundamental rules of soccer, you can appreciate the game and enjoy the game. And then later, as you watch more, oh, then you start to, oh, what's this offsides rule? I don't get it. And then you can start to uh, understand it a little better. What, 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 are the, what are these cards, these yellow cards? What's a red card? You, you start to understand these more and more. But the basic rules are usually enough. It's kind of like this for football. Okay? Uh, you just need to understand the basics. Kickoff, offense, defense, touchdown, and field goal. I'll explain later. And then running plays and passing plays. That's all, really. That's, that's the key. Those are the key things. As long as you understand the basic idea, they're marching down the field to get a point. The other one team has to stop them or take the ball away. All right? So one team on offense is trying to move forward to the end. The other team on defense is trying to stop them or take the ball away. That's the basic. That's the basic part of the game. So we'll, I'll teach you the basics of the game and we'll try to avoid the really small rules that you don't really need to know and, unless you become a fan. If you become a fan, then you, can, eh, then you can learn more of these small rules so they're a little more complicated. Okay. Okay, so this is a nice question from Emmanuel. Uh, hi, my dear master, I've got a question. I already know it's commonly asked, but are Americans usually more into NBA or football? Football for sure. Football's definitely number one in America. Not even close. Much more than basketball. Ba basketball is popular, but football, much more popular. 
So there's a point, for example, the, the two seasons will overlap. Football season begins in America uh, end of August about. And then it continues into January, sometime in January, maybe end of January. And basketball season, see, I don't even know when basketball season begins. I think it's, I want to say October or something. It begins a little later. But for a while there, the two overlap. They're going at the same time, football and basketball. Well, at, during that time when they're both going, football, you know, the number of watchers, the number of people who attend the games, much, 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 much higher in, for football than basketball. Now, when, ba when football ends, football will end in, say, beginning of February, basketball continues. That's when basketball gets more viewers. When football season's over, then people start to watch basketball because it's the only sport really going. Hockey also, but basketball is much more popular than hockey. So I would say if you rank them in order in the United States, it would be football number one, for sure. Not even close. Number two... Hmm. It's close between baseball and basketball. Uh, it's hard to say which one is more popular. Uh, they don't play at the same time. So right now is baseball season in the United States. So summertime is baseball season and winter is basketball season. So they're not competing directly. So let's say number two and three, baseball and basketball. Maybe basketball's for second, maybe baseball's second, I'm not sure. But those are definitely the top three. Football, baseball, basketball. After that, there's a big drop down to hockey and then things like golf and tennis and motorsports and other lots of other stuff, of course. MMA. But the top three are very clear. Football, baseball, basketball. With football being... Definitely number one. So this is the first time I see the championship football American. Mm -hmm. That game I was showing you was actually from last year's. So last, well, it was actually this year in 2018, beginning of the year, last season. The semifinal game. Norway and Poland greetings. Brazil. I love football and soccer. Brazil. Of course, the Brazilians are the masters of soccer, for sure. Uh, let's see another comment. It seems like a violent sport. The players should get injured. Yes and yes. <laughs> it's a violent sport. And yes, there are a lot of injuries. People have compared football in the United States to, you know, kind of simulated war. Okay, like it's a kind of warlike, violent, combative type sport. And it is. I played it as a kid. I loved it as a kid. But it's dangerous as you get to higher levels. Yeah, at, the, at the level I was playing as a, as a child, no big deal. We would play without, the, we would play in the, with my friends in the, just in the grass. No helmets, right? So... We couldn't really hurt each other too much. I mean, a little bit. We would throw each other on the ground, and, you know. But the real danger comes from when they're wearing the helmets and the pads, they hit each other in the head and they get concussions. They get brain injuries. They, they get leg injuries. As, they, as it gets to higher levels, you know, so high school and college level, the players get so big, so huge, so strong, it becomes a very, very violent and dangerous game. So at the, at the, you know, the small level with, with kids without the pads, it's, it's not really not that violent. It's kind of like rugby, actually. Kind of similar to rugby without pads. And that's how a lot of kids play it when they're young. But as it gets more professional at the higher levels with bigger and bigger and bigger people. So like I played as a kid. I tried to play in high school. I, I only did one year. I was too small, too small. And I, I just was, I was getting beat up <laughs> every week. <laughs> it didn't work anymore. I liked the game, but I just could not play it after that. Aha! Good question, Victor. 
Hi from Ukraine, it's the Green Bay Packers cap, isn't it? It's not, but it's a good guess. Green Bay Packers is similar, has a kind of a similar logo, a G for Green Bay, but the colors of Green Bay are green and yellow. So this is actually Georgia. The G is for Georgia, Georgia Bulldogs. That's my college team. The Green Bay Packers are a professional team, but it's, it's a good guess because their logo is quite similar. Hmm, someone's having a problem seeing the videos. I'm not sure why. It's interesting. I'm not sure. Love you because I understand every word you say. That's good. Uh, Victor says, I like to watch the NFL. So that's the professional league. But it's going a bit late in the Ukraine, 3 a.m. Uh, I'm a New England Patriots fan. Well, that's, they're probably the best team. And also the Dallas Cowboys are pretty good. Yes, so... These are both, these are professional teams. So for professional, if you know the NFL, the professional league, I like the Miami Dolphins. The New England Patriots are rivals of my team. But even though they're rivals, I have to admit, I have to say the New England Patriots, if you look at the last 10 years, even 15, 20 years, they're probably the best team, professional team. They're based, they're from Boston, the Boston area. Okay. Okay, here's an interesting comment. I met a woman at the same your same age from America. She said that it was a crazy game. People were trying to hit each other and catch the ball. Yep. She said she didn't understand why people like that. It's too dangerous. It's because she's a woman. <laughs> That's why she doesn't understand, because <laughs> it is violent. It's a violent game, but I'll tell you, it's really fun. It's super fun to play. I mean, I, I couldn't play. I could not play at that violent level now, but I, I will say as a child, it was super fun. And as I said, it's much less dangerous without the pads. It's actually, the helmet and, and the, the pads actually make it a little more dangerous in a way, especially with the big, big players at that level because they can hit so hard wearing those things. And if they hit each other in the head, the helmet's not enough to protect their brain. And so they get a lot of brain injuries, concussions, they're called. It's when your brain gets kind of shaken around in your head. That's called a concussion. And it's a big problem in football, a very big problem. They're trying to make rules to protect the players' heads now. And they're trying to improve the helmets and all of that. So. At that level, it's very violent. I mean, these guys are so big, so big. I, it's, it's frightening how much damage they can do to each other. So I agree at that, at that level. I, of course, normal people cannot play at that level. It's too violent and dangerous. But we might call it uh, like yard football or, or street corner football where it's played by children just in the grass, just, you know, not... Not, not wearing all the pads, just playing around. Then it's a little bit more like rugby. That's using the rules of football, of American football, but the violence level is more like rugby. So it's more just, you just you get, you get bruises, you know, and, and little what we call scrapes, like the ground scrapes against you, a little bit of blood, but it, it, it's actually not a real injury. So I, during my childhood, I played this game constantly with my friends. No serious injuries at all. Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. Yes. These are two very famous in American football uh, people, uh, professional. Tom Brady is a quarterback. He's kind of the star of the team, the leader of the team. And Bill Belichick is... Well, we have to admit, he's he's the best coach. He's like the like Alex Ferguson or Pep in in soccer, you know, just like one of the great managers, one of the great coaches ever. In football, it would be Bill Belichick is one of the great and he's still coaching now. Uh, 
Okay, another comment. See, it is art. I watched last season's Super Bowl. I love it more than soccer. Mm -hmm. All right, we have a convert to football. Let's see, who was in the Super Bowl last year? Was it the Eagles from Philadelphia? The Super Bowl is the professional championship game. You should have seen the college championship game. That was amazing. <laughs> that was, my team lost, but wow, what a game. Back and forth, back and forth. Overtime, in soccer you call it extra time. We have something called overtime in football. Same basic idea. They keep playing because it's a tie game. And a little different. So in, in soccer, usually they, they have extra time. If there's a tie game at the end of the normal time, right? If there's a tie game. Let's say Brazil and Germany are playing. At the end of 90 minutes, it's one to one. What happens next? Extra time, right? I believe so. Correct me if I'm wrong about the soccer rules. I don't know them super well. But basically, extra time. So they play ec additional time. What happens if nobody scores? It's still one-to-one -one after extra time. Well, eventually, they do the shootout, right? They, they do basically penalty kicks until one team wins. Well, in football, American football, they don't do that. They just keep playing until somebody wins, until somebody scores. They're... College and professional have a little bit different rules about overtime, but they will go to one overtime. If nobody scores, it's still tied after one overtime. They will do a second overtime. They'll do a third overtime. They'll keep going until one team wins, which can become very, very exciting. <laughs> and so I think it was two overtimes in the championship game. And also the semifinal game, the one game I just showed you, was two overtimes, and Georgia won that game. So if you're a fan, you're like, oh, oh, oh my God, oh. <laughs> it's kind of stressful. <laughs> I wonder if David Beckham still plays football, i.e. soccer. I don't think so. I, maybe, I don't know if he plays for fun, but I mean, not professionally, right? The last I read something, he was trying to buy a team in the United States. Major League Soccer is the professional league in America. And Beckham was trying, it was not only him, he was he had partners, but I think he was trying to buy a team, I think, in Miami. But I don't I don't know if he ever did that. I don't think so. Hmm. Let's look it up. That's why we have the internet. Let's take a look. David Beckham MLS team. Oh, he did. Beckham's Miami MLS team close to hiring. Oh, so he bought he does have a team. They they just haven't started playing yet. They're a new team in the league. I th I'm not sure if they start maybe they start next year. They don't have a name yet. Just Miami, Miami team. So, aha, I was right. Look at that. So David Beckham is the owner, or at least part owner, of a soccer team in America, in my, located in Miami. Patriots, that's right. Eagles versus Patriots, duh. That's right. It was the Super Bowl last year. Of course. <laughs> Asma say, making the comment about soccer, also the same. Men watch soccer game feel super fun and more excited. A lot of women don't like it at all. Yeah, some women like it, of course, and some women like American football. But overall, maybe more men are into it, get excited about it. Probably especially American football because it is such a rough game. Women don't play American football in the United States. They don't play football. A lot of women do play soccer in America. But football is just too violent for most girls. Okay, what's the difference between soccer and football? In the United States and Canada, it's, it's complicated. <laughs> this is a problem, okay? Because it's not the same in each country. Each English-speaking country, it's different. In England, football means soccer. It's the same game, exactly the same game. They say football, what the Spanish call football, right? And a lot of the world, some something like football. So in England, 
Football and soccer are the same game. But in the United States and Canada, they're completely different games. Soccer is the game you play with your feet. And football is American football, what I'm talking about today, where they have the helmets and they tackle each other and all of that. Which it's, 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 I think it comes from rugby originally. It's kind of a, a version or a variety of rugby would be my guess. I don't know if that's true, but I think it is. Then in Australia, it's even more complicated because the Australians, they say soccer. So the game you play with your feet, that's soccer. But they have something called Australian rules football. It's not the same as American football. It's, it's, it, it, it looks to me, it looks more like rugby, but it's not exactly rugby either. I honestly don't know exactly the rules of that game. I just know that Australian rules football is a completely other game, a different game. So, it com so soccer or football, it depends on which country. So I know it's a little tough, but so you have to be careful which country, who you're talking to. <laughs> if, if you're talking to Americans or Canadians, then say soccer, football is the game with the helmets. If you're talking to an Australian, say soccer also. But football is a different game for them. If you talk to people in England or Britain, football and soccer are the same game. Okay. <laughs> Carmen says, oh, this is, yes, true. You're doing a lot of work bigger than you can imagine. If you can see now, you are connecting the world. We are online from every continent. Awesome. Yes, indeed. I agree. And, you know, it's interesting. I'm sharing with you about American football and the rules of American football. It's interesting because of traveling and also just connecting with you. I've learned a lot about soccer. You know, growing up as in the United States, I didn't really know much about soccer at all. A little bit. We played soccer a little when I was a kid. Just I never joined a team. Just with my friends, we played it a little bit. So I understood the rules, but I really didn't know anything about international soccer. I didn't know anything about the World Cup or the like the big leagues in Europe, for example, the Spanish League and the Premier League. But from traveling and from connecting with you, I've actually gotten much more interested in the game of soccer. I, when I was living in Thailand, you know, Thais love the British Premier League. So I, I started watching a lot of those games there. Watched a lot of uh, some really good games. I started getting, seeing why people like it so much, understanding the excitement of it. I, I think my team, my, the team I liked at that time was Newcastle. I liked, they had Alan Shearer at that time. And I watched a few games of Newcastle's playing various teams and very exciting, very exciting. So, you know, so right. I'm teaching you something about my culture, American football, and I'm learning about soccer as well and learning to appreciate that game too. Why do people say that American football is so tough to do? Uh, because it is. <laughs> and most people say you should have a strong body to do it. The reason is you get hit hard when you're, pl when, and I, we're talking about at higher levels, high school, college, and professional. Below, you know, and for children, it's not, it's no big deal. Any kids can play it. But when you start getting at that level, the players are big, the players are strong, and they will hit you hard. And you're getting hit Bam, 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 bam. You're getting hit hard every play, constantly. If you're not tough, you're going to get injured and drop out. It, I couldn't do it. I was too small. I was too small. I was, I, got, I was just getting beat up. I survived one year of high school football, and then I, I couldn't play anymore. Ah, here, Claudemir Jr. In Brazil, American football became popular due to Giselle, I can't pronounce her last name, Bunchen, being Tom Brady's wife. Ah, I didn't know she was Brazilian. So probably the biggest star in American football is married to a Brazilian supermodel. That makes sense, I understand. 
Which sport makes more money, football or NBA in USA? Football, for sure, a lot more money. Now, internationally, I'm not sure because NBA is popular internationally in other countries more than football. Basketball is more of an international sport. It's in the Olympics. So, you know, I don't know if you add international. I'm not sure. But just in the United States, football makes more money. Okay, people are saying that they can't hear the microphone, so I'll turn it up a little bit. Okay, here's a good question. I'll try to explain it. How do you score in American football? People try to throw the ball past the empty goal. Okay, so... Hmm, one, two... Three, I believe, three ways to score. I'm just going to explain the two most common. The third one's a little weird and not and doesn't happen very often. So the two common ways to score. You've got the long field, right? There's two sides to the field, just like in soccer. On soccer, on each end, you have a goal. Well, there's, there's no goal, you know, like the with the net. We don't have that in football. Instead, it's just a line, right? A long line. So what you have to do is you have to carry the ball across that line on the other side, on the, right? The side opposite you. So you have to go down the field with the ball and then carry it across the line. That's how you score. How do you carry it across the line? You can run with it across the line or you can throw the ball to somebody who catches it on the other side of the line. It's called the end zone. There's a, it's like 10 meters, 10 yards wide, the end zone. So there's the line called the goal line. Goal, right? Just like in soccer, goal line. And then after the goal line, there's an, a box. That's called the end zone. There's a box. So you have to get the ball into that box. But... To score, someone you have to be holding the ball. You have to hold the ball. You can't just throw it in there. If you just throw it in there or kick it in there, nothing happens. You have a, a player has to be holding it when they go into that box, into the end zone. So they can hold the ball and run into the box, into the end zone. That's a touchdown. They score six points. Or one player can throw to another player the player's inside the end zone, inside the box, and they catch it inside that box, inside the end zone. That's also a touchdown. It's also six points. So throwing and catching or running into the end zone gives you six points, the touchdown. That's the biggest, the best score. That's the best way to score points in football. What's the other way? The other way, you'll notice on football games, there's a big, it's called uprights. It's this big yellow thing. It looks like the letter Y, right? There's a post and then it's split. It has two parts that go up. It's yellow. That's, they're called uprights because they're, they go up. So another way to score is you kick the ball between the two poles, between the two poles, between the uprights. If your team kicks the ball between the uprights, you also can get points. It's all, it gets more complicated because it depends on when you do it. But let's say most of the time you do that, you get three points. It's called a field goal. So you kick it between the two uprights and you get a field goal. You can also do this after a touchdown, and then, then you just get one point. It's called an extra point. But let's not worry about that. That's a little complicated. Okay, Vanya again. Hey, I had so much fun with some effortless English fans in Poland while playing football, soccer. They really appreciate your work. Effortless English fans are everywhere. Cool! Next time you can teach them how to play American football. <laughs> you could try it. Uh, 
Okay, so here's Michelle saying, uh, I understand pleasure in using physical strength. I practiced judo for a while. Exactly. Exactly right. Anyone who's done martial arts, combative sports like judo, jujitsu, boxing, these kind of physical, you know, a little bit combative type sports can be really quite enjoyable. Very, very fun and enjoyable. Because you're not trying to seriously hurt each other, right? They can, they're a little bit violent, I guess you could say. There is some pain involved in these sports. In judo, if someone throws you hard, ugh, you don't fall correctly, yeah, it hurts. <laughs> okay, but it's not a, usually you're not getting seriously injured. You're certainly not trying to seriously injure the other person. And there is, there's a, there's a certain enjoyment to that, of battling against another person or another team. Georgia Dogs, is that your team? Yes, Georgia Bulldogs. Someone says, which team do you love? I'm wearing the hat. Georgia Bulldogs is my team for college. For, for professional, I like the Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins are not very good. <laughs> for a long time, they've been bad. Georgia, however, is very good. They're number two in the country. <clears throat> Is there a kind of world league for football, <clears throat> American football? No, there's not. It's national. Canada has a league called the CFL, Canadian Football League. So Canada has a professional league. And the United States has a professional league. I think that's all. I think those are the only two real professional leagues. As far as I know... Canada and the United States are the only two countries where American football, football, is, is popular and really big. So it is popular in Canada. However, in Canada, hockey is number one. They're crazy about hockey up there, which is not surprising. It's a cold country and they're really good at hockey. But they do. They play football too. Uh, when, when football came to the U.S., there was already American football, so they called it soccer. Yep, that makes sense. And if, you can also look in the history of the word soccer. It goes back to England. So it was called association football, and they made it short, and they called it soccer. So soccer is, you know, was a word used by the English as well. And I don't know when they stopped using it and just started using football only, but... They did, in the past, also say soccer. <laughs> this is sad. Michelle again. Of course, Brazil loves soccer. Yep. But now we see less children playing. It seems everyone's at home using the internet. Yeah, that's sad. I agree. Same with American football. Fewer kids play it, you know, more just playing video games and stuff. It's too bad. I had so much fun. It's so good for kids to be outdoors playing those games. I think it's especially good when kids do that, not like an official team with what adults telling them what to do. Like the most fun I can remember from my childhood was playing football or sometimes soccer, sometimes other sports or games, but just, just my friends and I, no adults, no organized team, just, just us playing around, having a good time together. We would play in our yard. We played basketball a little bit too. It was so much fun. So much fun. And really good because you're, you're outdoors and using your body. It's really, it's healthy. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> okay, <laughs> from Vietnam again here. Some of the women in my country can't understand why people chase a little ball around the field for soccer. Mm -hmm. And a guy runs around with colorful cards. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. 
some people in general, not only women, you know, some people just are not into it at all. But I think a lot of the appreciation for these games comes from doing them or just doing anything, right? Just doing any kind of sport. You learn why it's so enjoyable. There's some joy that happens from using your body in that way, uh, from the, the competition, right? Doing your best and trying your hardest. And the other team is also doing that. You're kind of testing yourself and pushing yourself. And if there's a kind of meditation that happens when you play sports and you just forget about everything else happening. You're in this moment right now, totally focused on the game. That And it's a really joyful, happy, enthusiastic feeling. It's, it's great. And so this, when you play something like that or do something like that yourself, then when you watch others do it, who are really, really good, professional level, you can appreciate what they're doing. You know how difficult it is. It's exciting to watch it, right? Because I, even though I just played at a low, low level as a small child, football, American football, I can appreciate watching the professionals and the college guys and say, wow, they're so good, right? Because I know that how hard it is. And I understand the game because I actually played it. And even in general, I can, un I can appreciate a lot of sports just because I played some sports as a kid. Even, even individual sports can give you this appreciation. Even just doing something like uh, cycling, right? And, and training to cycling and entering some amateur race. It gives you an appreciation though, of pushing yourself and the training and the focus and the concentration and all of that. So I think that's where a lot of it comes from. So I think the people who never have done any sports themselves, doesn't matter men, men or women, people who've never played any kind of sport or not much, I think then it's hard for them to appreciate watching it. This, by the way, a good example of this is golf. A perfect example of this is golf. Because uh, before I played golf, I don't play much, but before I never played. So watching golf on TV seems like the most boring thing in the world. After playing golf, now I've played golf myself, it's still kind of boring, honestly, <laughs> to watch it on TV. It's not an exciting game to watch. It's a great game to play, not so exciting to watch. But I do appreciate it a little more now. If I watch the professionals and I see them hit a shot and it's a good shot, because I've played, now I know, ooh, that's really hard to do. I appreciate the skill. Before playing, I just, uh, just a ball, whatever. <laughs> right? Hard, hard to appreciate it. Okay, Larby with the question. A good, very good question. Are rugby and American football the same? They're not the same. They're not. Now, there are some similarities between the two. Uh, I'd say the biggest similarity is the general idea of you have a ball that's shaped kind of similar, this like an egg, an egg-shaped ball. And in rugby, you're trying to take that ball all the way to the other end of the field as a team. And in American football, you're doing the same. You've got your little egg-shaped ball, and you're trying to move it also to the end of the field to score to the other end. So it's in that way, it's similar. And also it's similar that you kind of you have an offensive team that has the ball, right? They're the ones trying to move forward. And then the other team's trying to stop them. You're trying to grab and tackle the person with the ball, take them to the ground, and take away the ball so then you have it and then you can try to score. So in that very general way, you know, similar. But after that, there are lots of different rules. I honestly, I don't know all the rules of rugby. I, I kind of have watched it. Get a general idea. I know they can't throw the ball forward, I believe. In American football, you can throw the ball forward. I believe in rugby, only throw the ball sideways or backwards. If you like rugby, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's the case. An obvious difference between rugby and football. In rugby, they don't have the pads. They don't have the helmets, all that stuff. But, you know, they're both tough sports. Look at the people who play rugby. They're big, strong, tough guys also. They're rough sports. You're grabbing people and throwing them to the ground and jumping on top of them and hitting them. So 
I, I kind of enjoy watching rugby. I can appreciate it, but I don't know all of the specific rules. Okay, here's a question about the field. How long and wide should the football field be? It's 100 yards long. How wide is it? I don't know. Let's look it up. Mr. Internet to the rescue. How wide is a... I'll say American, American football field. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 100 yards, it's 53 yards wide. Why 53? I have no idea. <laughs> Seems like a strange number, but uh, 53 yards wide. Oh, it's 160 feet. Okay, whatever. So 100 yards wide by about 53 yards. I mean, 153 yards wide, sorry, 100 yards long. 100 long. And it's numbered a little weird, too. So if you look at an American football field, the middle of the field is 50, right? Makes sense, 50-yard line. But then from the 50... There's no 60-yard line. It just starts to count down. So from the 50 in both directions, it goes down. The goal line is zero. So it goes. So if you're looking at the if you're looking at the side of an American football field, you'll see 50s in the middle, and then to the left it'll go 40, 30, 20, goal. And then if you start again in the middle, 50, and you go right, it also goes 50, and then goes 40, 30, 20, goal. So it. 50 in the middle, and then counting down to zero on both sides. Fernanda, good question. Kickoff happens, does the kickoff happen only in the beginning? No. <laughs> when do the kickoffs happen? Number one, beginning of the game. Number two, beginning of halftime. There's a halftime break. There's a halftime break, like soccer, I guess, right? So they, they play, and then halftime, there's a break. Both teams go and take a rest for a few minutes. Then they start the half. Then the second half, they start again. It starts with the kickoff also. So beginning of the first half, beginning of the game, and beginning of the second half, kickoffs. Also, after any team scores, they do a kickoff next, right, to kind of start again. So if one team scores, they go, they have the ball, they go all the way to the end, they get a touchdown, they get six points. How do they, what do they do after that happens? Well, it comes back and they do another kickoff and they start playing again. So anytime a team scores, the next time, the next play is a kickoff. Why don't they create a common league? I guess with the Canadians. Money is my guess. The Canadian League is less money and less skillful than the American League. So basically, you know, the, the NFL, the, the top professional league, the United States League, is, has all the best players. The best players who play American football, they go to that league. The people who cannot get to this league, they're not good enough, some of them will go to the Canadian League. So it's kind of like a second level league. So they're not equal in skill. That's probably another big reason they don't do it. Go Seahawks. <laughs> That's the Seattle team, professional. The Seattle team, so this comment here says go Seahawks from Marcel. That they're the Seattle team and they they're also a good team. They're famous for their stadium being very loud. Some people say they designed the stadium. They built the new stadium, and they designed it to be really, really, really loud, super loud, so that all the fans are going, ah! And it's, in fact, it's so loud that sometimes the, the other team cannot hear. They can't communicate to each other because the fans, the Seattle fans, are screaming so loudly that it creates problems for the other team. Of course, they only scream when the other team's trying to do something for their own team for their own team they stay quiet 
so that they can plan. But when the opposite team is trying to make a plan, the, the Seattle, ah, they all start screaming and yelling and making lots of noise, <laughs> trying to confuse them. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> All right. Does the Super Bowl is the Super Bowl in the professional league? Another question from Fernanda. Yes. So the professional league, the final game, the championship game is called the Super Bowl. For college, it's just called the national championship game. Pretty clear. National championship game. And whoever wins is the national champion, champion of the United States. So the Super Bowl last year, the most last season, was the Philadelphia team, the Eagles, against the Boston team, the Patriots, and the Philadelphia team won. For college, it was my team, the Georgia Bulldogs, against their neighbors, Alabama, and Alabama won. Alabama, I mean, they're, they're not only the best last year, but they are probably, in general, the best college team for many years. Strong team. <laughs> Victor says the full rules of American football are 500 pages long. Yikes. Soccer and football do not have the same rules. Not even close. Yeah, Super Bowl is like the super final. Exactly. Which is the most famous in America? Rugby or football? Football. For sure football. Americans don't really play rugby much. I mean, a few, but we don't really know rugby. So rugby's not popular, and people, most Americans don't really understand, don't understand the rules of rugby. Like, I don't know the rules of rugby so much. And the next question from I'm in again, is rugby an international sport? More international than football. Yes. Rugby is more international. It's played in more countries than American football. American football, as I said, American football really is only popular that I know in Canada and the United States, North America. Outside of that, maybe a few people know it, but it's not popular. There aren't big leagues in other countries that I know. Rugby, however, in more countries. They play it in England. They play it in uh, Wales, Ireland, France. New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, probably others that I don't know. So rugby is a bit more international, I'd say. Super Bowl is the professional league, yes. The idioms, as I said, the idioms, the first idiom we learned is kickoff. Touchdown is also, by the way, can be used as an idiom. So I said kick off as an idiom is used to start anything. Let's kick off the project means let's start the project. So that comes from football. You could also say things like, ah, oh, we got a touchdown on that. It means you got a victory. You got a success. So touchdown in a general way can have the meaning of success. Probably more common, though, is to use the word home run but that comes from baseball. We'll learn baseball later. <laughs> baseball has its own rules. Baseball is more of an international sport than football, for sure. Baseball is very popular in Japan, number one, in fact, Dominican Republic, uh, through all through the Caribbean region. Really good baseball players, very good baseball players. Baseball another day. Let's see. What will happen if the ball is out of the field? That's a good question. So when the ball goes out of the field in football, it's just they just bring it back. Where 
Depends where it goes out. So you have the sides. It's called out of bounds. Out of bounds. It means it's outside the field. Now in soccer, what happens? Someone kicks the ball off to the side. It goes off the field. You have a throw in, right? So when the, the other team gets the ball and they throw in with their hands. They throw the ball back in. In football, American football, the referee just brings the ball out. It depends where they, they find the, the spot, the point, which point, which line, where did it go out. And that's where they just bring the ball back to the middle of the field, and then they start the next play from that point. So they just reset, basically. They reset where the ball went out and continue playing. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm not sure what you mean by this. What I don't like in American football is the draw rules. It's unfair somehow, the draw. Maybe you're talking about if there's a tie. So, oh, you're probably talking about sudden death, which they've changed this rule for college, and I think they changed the rule for professional too. I need to look that up. But So it used to be in the past, if they went to overtime, extra time right then the first team to score would win so let's say it's tied 21 21 the game's over well no tie they're gonna go they're gonna play overtime they play overtime who wins well the old rule was first team to score wins and kind of like this comment some people said that's not fair because only one team one team receives the ball, they have a chance to win. So if they score, they win. The other team never gets a chance. That's not fair. So they've changed that rule, actually. I can't remember the exact rule because it's different in college and it's different in professional. College, both teams can try to score. So if one team scores in overtime, the other team still has a chance to try. So that happened in the championship game with my team. Alabama scored during the overtime. Ah, my team got it. My team scored during the overtime. <laughs> they go to a second overtime. Ah, my team scored a field goal, three points. Yes, we're going to win. We're going to win. But Alabama, they get a chance to score also. Unfortunately, they scored a touchdown. They got six points, and they won the game. So actually, those rules have been changed. Go Vols! What? Now that's... We can't have that on my channel. Seattle Seahawks, I will tolerate, but not the stinking Tennessee Volunteers. Okay, Go Vols, Marcel is saying Go Vols. That's the Tennessee team, neighbors and rivals of my team, Georgia. They're not so good, though. <laughs> they used to be good. They used to be really good, but now they're not so good. What's the most famous football player? I would say Tom Brady right now. Tom Brady, the guy we mentioned before. He's married to the Brazilian supermodel. He plays for the New England Patriots. That's the team in Boston, near Boston. He's kind of old, though. He's probably finished soon. He's He might have one more year. I don't know. He's Is he 40? I think he's 40. It's very unusual for someone his age to, to play and to play well. He's still playing well. He went to the Super Bowl last year. It's a, pretty amazing. That guy's amazing. But he's a freak. He's a freak of nature. I mean, he's the most famous player right now. What do you think about Vietnam soccer team? I don't know anything about them. I've always had the idea that rugby is originally from America. Is it right? No, I don't think so. I, I would guess England. Let's see. Where is rugby from? 
our old friend, the internet, the internet, the internet, originally originated in rugby school in rugby. I was right, England. It's from England. Rugby comes from England. What kind of sport do you like the most? To watch American football is still my favorite. College football now is my favorite. To watch. To do... I don't do really any team sports anymore. I do jiu-jitsu some, although I've been taking a break from jiu-jitsu. I had a couple injuries, so I haven't done it for several months. To been away from jiu-jitsu. So recently, I've just been doing you know hiking and things like that. Okay, so here's a good question. Which situation will the referee disqualify players in American football? It's more, it, it's more difficult in American football. In other words, it's less common. It doesn't happen so much in American football. I think it's more common in soccer with the red, with the red card. In American football, it happens if you, if you well, if they, if they push or touch the referee, they're out. <laughs> They'll be out very quickly. If they get in a fight, they'll be kicked out. If they try to hurt another player like in a, with, in a way that's really unsafe. So for example, the play is over. Nobody, it's done. They blew the whistle. right? So everybody's just standing and resting. And then if somebody come and hits, hits a guy in the back, he's not looking, he's not prepared, they're not playing. And they'll kick him out, maybe even get, he might lose a lot of money or something like that. So those kinds of situations. But in most games, nobody gets kicked out. I think in soccer, the red cards are much more common than disqualifying. In American football, it's, it's just lots of those yellow flags, the penalties, the yardage penalties. Another difference is if a player is kicked out in American football, he can be replaced. So there's, there are always, always, always 11 players per side. If, a, if they kick out a player, that team will put another player. They'll substitute another player. So they don't have to play with 10 people. They still play with 11. They just lose that one guy. In the UK, the salary they can get is 200 to 500 pounds per week for a good player. How much American football players? Well, let's look it up. Average NFL salary 2018. There you go. Let's see. What was the average salary? For a new player, $480,000. That's the, that's the minimum, half a million per year. Pretty good. The average is $2 million per year for the NFL. $2 million per year. Not bad. That's... That seems really great, right? Two million dollars per year is the average, not the stars. That's just the average player gets two million. However, they don't survive long. They get there are a lot of injuries. It's it's a game that's very tough on their bodies. I think also I saw the average player only survives like four years, something like that. So they, they can't play very long. Some, like Tom Brady, like I said, Tom Brady is a freak. He, he has played for 20 years. It's unusual. Most do not survive that long. And then Victor says, yeah, disqualifying. It's called unnecessary roughness. That's correct. Unnecessary roughness. It's basically unnecessary violence. <laughs> violence is okay. 
but not unnecessary violence. Only necessary violence is okay in football. <laughs> Say hello to Brazil. Hello, Brazil. All right, I think that's about it. Whew, lots of questions. Good. So We'll do this some more. I'll do football season's coming. I'll do some shows, show some pieces of games, probably Georgia games. If you're interested in this, you can watch these shows. If you don't care about American football, then just skip these shows. No big deal. I will still be doing shows for the book club. I'll still be doing shows about learning English. I'll still be doing shows about everything else. But I thought I'd just share some of the American culture. And American football is a big part of our culture. So hope you enjoyed the show. As always, go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Effortless. EnglishClub.com. Join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com.